days, you're dazed by storms ahead. When long rain fills your mind with dread. Hi, I'm Maddie, and I'm here with Adam, who's a college student for Dermot College, and we're going to talk about the mental health provisions here at York and how to access them. So, um, Adam, could you give me a kind of brief introduction to yourself and your role? Hi, um, my name's Adam Formby. I'm a college student over at Dermot College. Uh, I've been in the role now for three years, and the role has quite a lot of different responsibilities. We basically are the first point of call for students who have kind of any kind of welfare uh, issues. So we're kind of responsible for signposting people onto the right types of services and for generally helping them maybe try and sort out their issues. What's the difference between what you do as a college tutor and kind of welfare reps? The difference between kind of uh, welfare reps here at the University of York is that they are usually elected in the JCR and they usually put on welfare events uh, for people to come in and that put on drop-in sessions that people can go and attend um, and that kind of allows people to go and talk about those issues. Uh, college tutors are somewhat different because we exist part of the kind of the university's professional welfare services. So we're kind of maybe the first point of call. If you wanted to go and speak to uh, you know, a counsellor, we'd be the person who would go and put you in contact with that kind of um, organisation, as it were, in the, in the university. But there are also other kind of support services in the university as well. Obviously, you two have a, have a kind of a welfare contingent, and they work with welfare reps and JCRs as well. And, you know, there's obviously Nightline as well, and other, other kind of services that, that kind of can give... Uh, support and help if people want to go and use them. So if someone was feeling stressed or someone was feeling a bit down, could they choose which of those services to go and access straight away? Yeah, they could. Every service here that we have, I mean, the, the one kind of maybe overall characteristic that defines all of them is that they're open. You know, yeah. It's about trying to help people in terms of their well-being. So it, it doesn't matter if, if you go and speak to you know, JCR Welfare Rep, a college tutor, if you go straight to Open Door, if you were to go straight to Nightline. The whole idea is to have a holistic group of services which can help anyone. Some people might not be aware of, of different, these different things, but if they get in touch with one of these services, then hopefully that can start up the process which will get them the support they need. Are these services quite easy to access as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, talking about the college tutor role in particular, uh, we have a mobile, like a welfare mobile. We're working as a team of us. So I look after, for example, three blocks in Durban College. People have access to my number. I go around the blocks. I get to know them, particularly in the first term. And the, the idea behind that is obviously they can ring us any time and we can kind of be there. Or we're on campus. We stay on campus overnight. So we're able to go and, and speak to people straight away if they need that help. Um, in terms of open door and other services, they also have kind of contact details and, and numbers and emails that you can contact them, and you can also just go into their, into their office. And also, um, you've talked about kind of college tutors living in blocks and welfare tutors for colleges, but I was just wondering about off-campus students. How would you access the same services, and can you access the same mm. kind of college tutor service? You can. I mean, we do have many students who live in town, for example, who might not be using their college tutor services. However, Open Door and those more professional services are open to all okay. university, university students. And also, if someone wants to ring me and say, "Oh, Adam, I need some help," you know, and they live on campus, then certainly I would help them. But I guess it's just making sure they would be aware of that and make sure they know that they can call us as well. You know, it's, it's meant to be universal kind of. Another problem we were trying to address was not just access, but also for people to understand that um, do people come to you with kind of all kinds of problems? Yeah, definitely. Just to elaborate on the concerns that students have and, and how we deal with them, um, they can be from the very, very trivial, I say trivial, not in a kind of a, a derogative sense, but to very, very serious. They can be from kind of very severe alcoholism to suicide ideation to real kind of mental health issues where it's about essentially some kind of episode where someone actually needs some real counselling and support to someone kind of just being a bit stressed and needing yeah. to and wanting to have a chat. So I'm sure if so, you know if someone was feeling stressed from exams or homesick, and that's that's a problem that you would be able to talk to, or at least you know offer a cup of yeah, tea and have a chat. Yeah, with them. of course, yeah, and. and and the idea sometimes is whether it's just being there as a support mechanism so people feel as if like, they have someone to talk to. Yeah. One of the things that I've been doing this year, for example, is arranging exam timetables for students. We can sit down with them and say, OK, we're going to make a timetable where we're going to help you figure out the best way of revising for these exams. And sometimes, you know, that's a good way that people feel as if they get more control of these issues. You know, the thing about coming to university, if you come to university at a young age, your life is in flux in lots of ways. At 18, 19 years old, you still haven't kind of settled into being an adult yet. And that means if you've came from another country or if you've came from 
another part of the country where you're quite far from home, it, you can become homesick quite easily, especially with exam pressure and exam stress. Just having that facility to talk to someone, I think, is a really nice thing. So we've talked about how you deal with the smallest problems, you deal with the largest problems, and you can pass people on. I just had one more question, that is, this is all confidential, it's mm. all... Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole point of our service is to basically help people. The idea is obviously provide a welcoming thing where people feel as if they can come and talk to us about the about concern they have, but also it means that you've got to protect their identity and, and you might be the first person they're talking to about something which is very, very serious. And that means that there's a, there's a huge amount of responsibility regarding how what you do that information, you know, um, and, and actually being respectful to that person. OK, uh, thanks for talking to me, Adam. I think we've learned a lot about the services and it's been really great, so thank you. Cool.